Hello everyone. In today's video, we're going to be looking at how we can install OpenWeb UI. We're going to be using the recommended way to install OpenWeb UI, which is through the use of Docker. Now, if you've never used Docker before, here's a simple analogy to help you understand what Docker is. Imagine that you were playing some sort of a music video, or you were playing just a song, for example, using a tool known as VLC player. And you were able to play that music just fine on your computer. Everything was working fine. The music does play fine. And uh, you wanted your, maybe your friend or your coworker to listen to the song. So all you would do is you would send this song, maybe it's in a .mp4 format, and you would send that over to your friend. Now, you, if you send this file over to your friend, your friend is then essentially also going to want to play this file. The only issue here is that your VLC version is version two and your friend's VLC version is version one, which means that in your VLC player, you have access or your VLC can actually play MP4 files. However, your friend can't really play MP4 files. They can only play MP3 files. So when you tried to send this file over to your friend and they tried to click on the play button, the file actually was not playing anything. It said that, well, in order to play this file, you're going to have to update or upgrade your VLC player from version one to version two. So, okay, not a big deal. They can update this version uh, from version one to version two. However, now when they try to install version two, it starts saying things like, well, you don't have the right drivers. You don't have the right firmware, so you're going to have to reinstall the drivers. You're going to have to install newer firmware. And it can be such a headache to maintain all of those different versions. Imagine that you had another coworker, and their uh, VLC version was version 3. And in version 3, maybe they removed something like MP4 support. So then they would have to downgrade from version 3 back to version 2. So it gets very difficult to maintain this sort of consistency. And that is where Docker containers come in because they allow us to package all of the different dependencies, the libraries, the frameworks, all of those things into something like known as the container. Now we can access a list of all of these different types of containers that are available onto something known as Docker Hub. So we have containers, for example, for Olama. We have containers for machine learning, uh, which is through TensorFlow or PyTorch. We have Langchain containers, we have Home Assistant containers, and we also have a container for OpenWeb UI. So what you would do is you would first download Docker Desktop, whether it's for Mac or for Windows. And once you download Docker Desktop, you'll be given some sort of an interface that looks like this. So I have a couple of these containers that are, uh, that are present here, but I have this one container that's currently running. And the container that I have running is the open web UI container. So once you install Docker desktop, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop this container and I'm also going to delete this container as well. So, and just for consistency, let me just go ahead and delete all of the containers. So here right now I have no containers that are available. Let me, let's say that I wanted to get the open web UI interface. So I can see here that if I have Olama on my computer, I need to use a specific command. So I'm going to copy this command. And this is the one, this is the thing that I need to run. So to do this, I'm going to go to my command prompt window and I'm going to paste the command. That's the Docker run. I'm, I'm saying that I wanted to run on port 3000. Uh, I'm specifying that I'm going to add this as my host. Uh, restart the container all the time and I'm giving it, I'm saying that this is the name of the container. So because I've run this container before, it's pretty fast for me to actually start it up. If it's the first time that you were running it, it might take you a second to get this loaded. So now essentially I have this container that I've pulled and this container is running. So what that means is if I click on this, it's going to take me to open web UI here. Now, all I would need to do is then just sign in. I can sign up. It doesn't matter because all of this is just using the resources of your local computer. So you can sign up here, for example, with your admin account, and then you'll have access here to open web UI. So this is one way in which you can get started, but with using open web UI. 
There are other ways as well. If you wanted to, for example, do some manual installation using PIP, that's also available. But the preferred way has always been to use a Docker container. And that's the way that I would also recommend.